Example 159. Four methods of blending penicillin were compared in a randomized block design. The blocks are blends of the raw material. So they're telling us here the blends are the blocks. It says construct the ANOVA table. Are there differences between the methods? So are there differences between these four methods? And then they ask us are there differences between the blends? And then they say use a 10% significance level for both of these tests. Okay, so let's set up HO and HA here. With HO, and this we're going to deal with the treatment, or in other words, the blends, or the method, pardon me, we're going to set up the classic uh, hypothesis that says they're all the same, right? So the mean for A is equal to the mean for B is equal to the mean for C is equal to the mean for D. That's our classic HO when you're talking about the treatments. And then let's look at uh, the alternative then. The alternative says that at least two of these differ from each other, right? So at least two differ from each other. So that you can find a pair of them that are not the same to each other. Or you could also say at least one differs from the rest of the, the values in the group, etc. Those are all the same statements. Anything that says something like that is fine. Let's do the HO for the blocks now. For the blocks, we're talking about blends one through five. So we're going to say the same thing for HO, that the mean for the first blend is equal to the mean for the second blend, is equal to the mean for the third blend, is equal to the mean for the fourth blend, is equal to the mean for the fifth blend. All right, now once all those are in, we're going to use the alternative hypothesis, which is going to say the same thing this one basically says, at least two differ from each other, right? So at least two differ from each other, differ from each other. Okay, fine. So we have our HOs, HAs. Now the next step is usually to go and get the data. We're going to do the data for both of these all at once. We're just going to create the ANOVA table. And to do that, we're going to need to do some data calculations first. So if you recall what we do for these randomized block design experiments, we do the correction factor. After the correction factor, we do the total sum of squares, SS total. When we're done with the total sum of squares, we're going to get the sum of squares for treatment and for blocks. So sum of squares for blocks, sum of squares for treatment. When you're done with that, you can finally derive the sum of square for error. And once you're finished with all that, you're going to go over to the ANOVA table and plug all these numbers in and finish your calculations that are necessary to produce your test stat. So let's start working on those right away. The correction factor, if you recall, has the formula the summation of all the y values, in other words, all these numbers in the table that are in white. We're going to square that number and then divide by the number of values that went into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of that step now. Okay, so when you look over here at the bottom of our table, we see that we have the grand total, right, which is basically the sum of all of these data values collected together. So that's going to be the sum of the yi. So nicely the table provided that for us for we don't have to do it ourselves. So 1720 squared becomes the top divided by the number of values we have. Well, we have five in each uh, column and we have four columns. So we have a total of 20 values working with, right? So let's do that quickly. 1720 divided by, or squared, pardon me, divided by 20. So 1720 squared divided by 20 and we end up with the answer 1,400, oh sorry, pardon me, it's 147,920. Okay, so with that value we have completed the correction factor which we're going to use many times so I encourage you to store that in your calculator or keep track of it so that you can plug it into the next step pretty easily in your calculator. Now from there what we're going to do is the sum of square total. The sum of square total is a little bit tedious so what I've done already is I've gone ahead and done the first part of the calculation. That first part of the calculation is basically to take all those values in each cell there in white. Each one of those is going to be squared. And once we square all of them, we add them all together. That takes a long time, so I've gone ahead and worked that out for us already. Then we're going to subtract off the correction factor to finish the calculation. So I worked this number out already for us, and that number turns out to be 148,480. Now once we have that, we're going to subtract off our correction factor, which is 147,920. So with those two in our calculators, let's go ahead and take care of the rest of this then. So we're going to do 148,480 minus the correction factor. And we get a difference of 560. So 560. Okay, so that's your total sum of squares for the problem. Now once we have total sum of squares, we can do the two calculations for the treatment and the blocks. So the sum of square for treatment, 
what we do is we take all the treatment totals, we square them and divide by the number of values that went into those totals. So here's our treatments. The totals are given at the bottom. The number of values in each one is the same as the number of blocks. In other words, it's five. So we're going to say 420 squared divided by five. That's our first one. For method B, we're gonna add 425 squared divided by five. Then for method C, we're gonna have a total of 445, so 445 squared divided by, again, five. And lastly, for method D, we'll have 430 squared divided by five. All right, so once we have all that taken care of, the last thing we do is subtract off the correction factor, which we have stored in our calculator. All right, let's see what that works out to be when you type it all in the calculator. So we're going to have 420 squared, so 420 squared divided by five plus 425 squared divided by five plus 445 squared divided by five plus 430 squared divided by five minus the correction factor which I stored in my calculator as x. Okay, so I'm just looking over the numbers to make sure I didn't type anything incorrectly. Everything looks good. Hit enter, we get the answer 70. All right, now that you have the sum of square for total, I mean for treatment, pardon me, so sum of square for total and sum of square for treatment, we're gonna do sum of squares for the blocks. It's the same idea, we're gonna use an analogous approach. We're gonna take the totals now for the blocks, right? So for example, for the first block or the first blend, we're gonna use 368 squared over the number of values that went into that total, which is one, two, three, four, or in other words, the same amount of treatments, right? Plus, 332 squared divided by 4 plus 340 squared divided by 4 plus 352 squared divided by 4 plus 328 squared divided by 4 minus the correction factor. All right, so let's type all that in, right? Get all that worked out. So we're going to have 368 squared divided by four plus 332 squared divided by four plus 340 squared divided by four plus 352 squared divided by four plus 328 squared divided by four minus the correction factor. And when we're done, we get 268 as our answer. Okay, very good. Now, oops, 264. I don't know why I wrote 268 there, pardon me. 264, so we'll cross that out and write 264. Okay, so that's our sum of squares for blocks. Our sum of square for treatment is 70. Our sum of square for total is 560. All right, from there, we have a very simple calculation to do to get the sum of square for error, the SSE. To come up with this, we simply take the sum of square for the total minus the sum of square for the treatments minus the sum of square for the blocks. All right, and when we plug those numbers in, in this case, the total sum of squares is 560, the treatment sum of squares is 70, and the block sum of squares is 264. So we'll have 560 minus 70 minus 264. When you're finished, you get 226. Now we're ready to go to our ANOVA table. So we're going to take all of these values, the ones that we calculated from here down, these four numbers, and we're gonna put them into our ANOVA table and finish the rest of the calculations necessary to form the test stat. Okay, so I have our little makeshift ANOVA table created here. We have the method, the blends, right? Remember, methods are treatments, blends are the blocks. We have the error and the total. Let's get the degrees of freedom first. So for method, we need to take the number of methods minus one for the degrees of freedom. The number of methods is four minus one will give us three. The blends, well, there are five blends. So we'll take the five blends minus one, it gives us four. Then let's go to total. Total is how many total numbers we have in our table here, right? In the white boxes, there are going to be, remember, four columns of five. So we're going to have essentially 
uh, a total of 20. So 1 minus 20 gives us 19, or 20 minus 1, pardon me, gives us 19. Now the sum of these two numbers must add up to, along with this number here, 19. So if I add 3, 4, and the number in this category has to add up to 19. So if you think about that, then the correct answer would have to be 12, right? Because 7 and 12 make 19. So this number must be 12. So we use subtraction to get this degrees of freedom. It's a much simpler method to do it than to have to memorize the formula, right? All right, good. So 3 and 4 make 7. Adding that to 12 gives you 19, so this error must be 12. All right, so the sum of squares for method, that's what we have to pull now from the work we just did. So let me just move this over because this sheet of paper that we have here is covering up our answers from our work before. Okay, so if we look at our work from before, the sum of squares for total was 560, so this number will be 560. The sum of square for treatment was 70, so that would be our method in this case. The blend, the sum of square for the blocks, which is the blends here, is 264. And then the sum of square for error we worked out last, it was 226, 226. Okay, so now that we have those numbers, our next step then is to fill in the mean squared and the ultimately the test stat f. So let's do that quickly with our calculator, going straight across. Remember how this is done, we're just going to do straight across division. This goes into this to produce that, right? This goes into that to produce that. And then this goes into this to produce that. Alright, so let's do that then. So we'll have 70 divided by 3, and we find the answer 23.3 repeating. 23.3 repeating. If I do the next one, 4 into 264, 264 divided by 4, I get the answer 66. If I do 12 into 226, I get the answer 18.83 repeating. All right, so these are all the numbers that we need for the mean squared values. Now from there, we have to form our F test stat. So let's do this visually. Remember, it's the error that goes into each of these to then produce the F test stat. So if I want to know the F test statistic to compare the treatments, right, to the error, I'm going to take the error, divide it into this number, and once I do that, it'll produce this number. Okay, so let's do that then. We're going to have 23.33333 divided by 18.833333. And when I'm done, I get the test at 1.239, 239, 1.239. Let's do the same. We put the error into the blend, right? The error into the blend, and then that produces this test stat. So we're going to have 66 divided by 18.833333. And when I do that, I get 3.504, 3.504. And this value, remember, in the box is empty. Okay, great. So we have our two test statistics. We have one to test the treatments and one to test the blocks. Our next step then is to draw our rejection region on a little drawing and then come up with our critical value. So if I draw my two bell curves, not bell curves, but F curves, right? They're F curves, so they're long, uh, right tailed looking curves. I'll draw two of them here one for the blocks, one for the treatments. Okay, the alpha for this one is going to be, according to the problem, 10%, so 0 0.10, and the alpha for this one is also 0 0.10. That means our critical value is going to be F. The, this is for treatments, remember, so our numerator degrees of freedom for this fraction that produced the F statistic, it was comprised of the treatment divided by the error. So the degrees of freedom is 3 and then 12. So 3 for the numerator, 12 for the denominator, and 0.10 is where we go to look that number up. We have the same thing for this one, basically. We'll have an F test stat. This time, though, our test stat was here, right? It was 3.504. And that came from degrees of freedom 4 divided by 12. So it's 4 comma 12 comma 0 0.10. So almost the same, we just have a slight different number up front, right? For the numerator degrees of freedom. Now let's go to our chart and get our F test that or sorry, F critical values. 
is we're looking up a pair of critical values on the 0 0.01 table. The first one is 3 for the numerator degrees of freedom and 12 for the denominator degrees of freedom. That will give us the critical value 2.61. And the second one is 4 and then 12. So that will give us the value 2.48. So 2.61 and 2.48. Okay, so for the test of the treatments, we find the critical value to be 2.61, and for the test of the blocks, we find the critical value to be 2.48. Okay, so we have our two critical values. Now we're going to compare our test stats against those critical values. So as we do that, we see that the test stat for the treatments here falls short of the rejection region, but we see that the test stat for the blocks falls into the rejection region. So our conclusion for the treatments is that we do not reject HO and therefore do not support HA. Do not support HA. And for the blocks, we're going to have a different conclusion. That's going to be to reject HO and therefore support HA. So what this shows is that it was a good idea to set up blocks in the first place because the blocks seem to be significant, which means that it kind of matters where you get the raw material from, right? The blocks are the blends of the raw material, so the blends here are going to make a difference. And I guess suspect that the researchers knew that already, and that's why they decided to block out those blends so they didn't have that those differences interfere with the methods differences, right? When they look at the methods, right, after blocking out these differences produced by the blends, it turns out the methods do not seem to have a significant difference between them in terms of how much penicillin they produce. So because of this, the researchers might conclude that whatever method is cheapest or simplest to use would be the best one to choose since they all seem to produce the same average amount of yield. In the case of the blends, though, that needs to be paid attention to because it appears that at least one blend is significantly different from the others. So, or at least significantly different from one of the others. So, you might be able to say, for example, blend one produces a significantly higher yield than blend five, right? Because blend five is the smallest, blend one is the maximum. So, those two should be able to have a difference if we were able to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's your essential results or conclusion. And what we say then, of course, when we're done is that, um, you know, the blocks are significant and the treatments were not.